Well, I guess we will get started here. Again, welcome to NAB 2015 in the Rampant Design booth. I am Deb Eschweiler. I'm a freelance editor out of uh, Minneapolis, which I say, even though I technically live in St. Paul, but most people have never heard of St. Paul, so we go with Minneapolis. Um, I am here today to tell you about how I had a recent project and uh, that uh, Rampant Design Tools helped me make rather short work of. It was a last-minute chroma key project that uh, was uh, kind of plopped in my lap with a, a uh, relatively quick turnaround and a limited budget, of course, because these days they all have limited budgets. So uh, as it so happened, I, uh, I was not involved in the pre-production. They actually shot it before they called me, so I didn't really get to have any input on the shoot, but that happens a lot too. Um, so, uh, but uh, once I knew what the project was, I was able to go through the Rampant Library to find out what, um, oh, see, I forgot to turn something off, um, to find out what uh, resources I had available to me. And the, uh, give you a real short synopsis of the project, this is for a live event. And the, uh, the presenter was going to be live on stage talking about a kind of a controversial, um, controversial change in their industry. And he's talking to the, to the audience. And up over his shoulder, the devil pops up in the classic theme. And then later on, the angel will pop up. And they will talk to each other and over each other. And the angel and the devil obviously pre-recorded. Also, the same guy that's on the stage. So there was a lot of timing issues, which that's not really a rampant thing, so we won't really get into that too much. But once we got the timing sorted out, it was time to put in the effects, to put our devil into the proper um, uh, environment. So I went through the Rampant Design Library, and I picked some selects. And oh, I'm going to close this up for us. I'm going to go up, up here. I picked some selects out of the Rampant Design. And I'm going to quick show you my um, folder structure in here, which I did not set up. Where am I looking for? There we go. So in this folder, I went through and I pulled selects out of the fire and the smoke and the studio flares. And this is, uh, is going to show you kind of a, a, a Final Cut 10 um, feature that I did this project in Final Cut 10, though I do work in Avid and Premiere Pro and both, both flavors of Avid, or of Avid, of Final Cut Pro. And uh, so once I had my selects, I, I made the folders, I named them what they are, and I just drag them right into my event. And bam, here I have automatic keyword collections. So I didn't have to go through, import my footage, and then t turn around and tell them what it is to get them to, f to sort into my keyword collections. They're just boom right there. And if I wanted to, I could still go through and add keywords, but this is just a way to save some time. If you organize beforehand, you can really sit, you know, get down to editing a lot faster once you actually get into the project. So let's. That being said, let's get into the project. So I have these three pieces of fire here. I've got the, uh, the full screen, and then I have this kind of far away piece of fire. And then I have a, a little bit sparser fire. So my, the first order of business is to put uh, some fire back behind that devil. So I'm just going to take this clip, and I'm going to drop it underneath here and just get rid of my excess. And first thing you, you notice, two things. One is we've got a little bit of letterboxing down here. And that is because the Rampant Design tools come in with their spatial conform set to, well, actually, it should have been set to, I'm on the wrong clip, right? There we go with their spatial conform set to fill, to fit. Which means, if you look at the uh, bounding box, and we'll zoom out a little bit so we can see it, it's saying every pixel in this frame, put it in my screen. Even if there's a little bit of uh, 
letterboxing going on. And we don't want that in this particular case. So I'm going to actually change it to fill. And then we get the opposite. We get it to fill the frame. And then we have some unused pixels on the sides over here. So that's great. We're going to look at this. And as we scroll through, we notice towards the end here, keeping up with me, that the fire kind of starts to peter out at the end. And kind of we're only seeing it here on the left. We want to see it here on the right, too. So I could go back to the library and maybe find another piece of fire. But I'm just going to do a quick editing 101 trick. And I'm going to make a copy. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to go into the uh, effects, find my flipped. Very easy. I'm just going to flip this. Now, of course, what that does is it gives us the when doves cry uh, mirroring video. Of course, we don't really want that because fire is, of course, organic. So we want to just go ahead and offset that just by a couple seconds. And now if we scroll through, we have full fire, nice, full, raging fire back there that stays up pretty full until the end of our, until the end of our clip. So, yay, great, we've got fire. What goes with fire? Smoke, right? Right, Adam? Smoke goes with fire. And earth and wind, too, so. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a piece of smoke here and just to, uh, yeah, I, I picked a bunch of different smoke. I wasn't quite sure what was gonna work out, so I, I cut a couple of different options here, a couple of different variations, Little puffs, some longer pieces. These last two here are um, for an effect that we're going to do kind of towards the end of this demo. Just kind of some poofs when he has a, uh, a little gag he does. So I'm going to grab my Smoke 6. And I'm going to put that here. And I'm going to do the same thing, get rid of my excess. Because we don't care about that right now. And... Obviously, we have our spatial conform to quickly keep. I'm going to set that to fill, so we fill, get, get our top and bottom. Of course, it is kind of a, a little heavy-handed in here, so I'm going to also dial down the opacity. We're going to go to 25%. And now with this smoke, we're having the same issue a little bit of it kind of peters out here towards the end, and we, uh, we kind of lose our smoke. So I'm going to add a few layers, because we know Monica loves layers. So I'm going to grab a couple, three more pieces. I'm going to grab this five here, put it on, on top here. And then I'm, I am going to trim off the ends a little bit because. And then next to that, I have this 16 that looks kind of nice, kind of comes from the other side. So we're, oh, do it that way. And kind of the same thing. But now in the middle here, we're going to have a same issue where it's, it, we're going to have a little bit of a hole. So I'm going to get a little bridging hunk. And that, what I liked for that was this one that kind of stayed low and, and went across the middle. Just trying, just trying to keep it organic so it's not quite uh, so. Now here is one of the things about trackless editing that can really uh, be a little bit frustrating. And I'm going to show you a real quick way to handle this, how my chroma key is now not all together. So I'm just going to select all four pieces. I'm going to select all four pieces. And I'm going to, for this specific case, oh, there we go. I am going to create a storyline. So it's going to take all those four pieces and, and put them together in this wrapper so they always stay together. So they just it's one unit. And we'll put him back where he belongs. And of course, on all three of our smokes, we have the same problem of uh, going back, we're going to, I have uh, my spatial conform. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it. And I am going to paste attributes, one of my favorite uh, features on 
on all the editing platforms. We're going to spatial conform and compositing. Boom, they're all, now they all are set to fill and 25%. And my smoke now is, uh, it's full and it's back there, but it doesn't smack us in the face. So we're kind of like that. So we have a couple more things we just want to finish up with. I am going to take this piece of fire here, that kind of a little bit of a, um, it's not quite as full fire. I'm going to take the whole piece and I'm going to put it in front of him, line it up at the end here. So we get a little bit of fire in front. So he's like really buried there in, in fire. And of course, same problem, set this to fill. And I am going to dial back about halfway through. It gets kind of full over his face. So I am going to dial back the opacity here to 75%. And it uh, doesn't quite obscure him quite as much as it might have otherwise. So we have two more little effects we want to, uh, to do here. And uh, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. This first effect is just how is he getting in? How is he coming, coming up from the bowels of hell to, to meet us? And I did uh, kind of pre-make pre these since we, uh, these are not technically rampant things. But I took just a, a, a directional blur, plain directional blur which is in the blur category here. And uh, the first keyframe, I cranked it really high up, so he's incredibly blurry. And then I made the, uh, this clip as long as I wanted it to be. So then the last keyframe ends up being, let's zoom in. The last keyframe, the directional is completely off. And then of course we want him to rise up, so transform control. Same thing with the keyframes down here. He is, let me turn on the, zoom out a little bit. So when we're at the first keyframe, he's just, you know, 1080 frames just outside of the, uh, outside of the frame and he, and he pops up. And that's all well and good, but we wanna make it, give him a little bit more flash. So I took this studio flare and it, uh, Kind of has a nice, nice flash. It's got some nice red in it, which goes with our. So I'm going to put that over this, and you will notice that studio flare is uh, a little bit different than the smoke and the fire. When they come in, we do need to look at the composite mode. I'm going to change that to add, and now we're getting it to key over. And there's our flash. But of course, he's coming from below. So we're going to do, we're going to flip the rotation 90 degrees. And then, ooh, well now we have the problem. Well, we're not quite filling the frame. Well, with spatial conform, we're going to do that. We're going to set it to none. Turn this on so you can see the, uh, see how big the, f the, this is a 4K file. So my 1080 project, I've got a lot of extra real estate to work with. So I'm going to go back to and um, just scoot it up. So my flare is oh, down here at the bottom. I'm going to zero out my X here so it stays centered. And our second problem is my flare is much, much, much too long. So we're going to... Trial and error, I learned four times, made it pretty much exactly the length I wanted. So now, as he comes in, oh, wait, let's set this back to you can actually see me mode. So it comes in, we get the nice lens flare, and he appears, and it's not keeping up with me. There we go. <laughs> and so just real simple, real fast ac li little accent that makes things uh, go great. And when we look at the rendered version, it'll... Uh so the very last thing as we're 
coming up on the end of our demo here is we have this little gag in here after he looks at, looks at the audience and waits for them to laugh where he, uh, he has this little cough. And he has this little cough. <laughs> there we go. So he coughs, he waves away some smoke. So we got to put some smoke in there for him to wave away, which was something they didn't tell me that was going to happen. I actually had to uh, hear it as the director was directing this guy is how we found out we were doing this. So I uh, grabbed two kind of smoke bomb looking things and I tried them both and I ended up picking this one. Oh, this one. I'm going to drop it down. And again, our compose or our spatial conform, I'm going to set that to fill. But I'm actually going to leave it at 100% instead of dr dr dropping the, uh, the opacity back to 25 on this one. And of course, like with my uh, studio flare, it's much too long for what I want it to do. And again, through trial and error, I figured out that if I made this 1,200% speed, it did pretty much exactly what I wanted it to do. And uh, nice sound effect that went with it that we won't be having here today, but we, uh, we smoked the devil. And let's go ahead and look at the rendered version. and kind of show you how it looks in real life. So, here he comes. Audience is laughing, hopefully. Well, see, that got shifted out of place. <laughs> There it is. There we go. Okay. And since this was something that had some proprietary information in it, we don't get to actually hear him um, talk. But so it was, it was pretty fast to build. Uh, Rampant Design Tools solved the the problem of I didn't really know what they were expecting, but we. Uh, when I uh, handed it over to the producer to show the client, they, it would end, they said it looked, looked a lot more interesting than they thought it was going to, and, they're really, and they were really looking forward to seeing it on the big screen. So client was very happy. Rampant Design Tools made short work of a project that could have been a lot, m much more time-consuming if I had to f figure out how else to create fire and smoke. So... There's the end of our demo. Thanks for coming out to Rampant Design Tools booth at NAB 2015.